Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK around the world into your homes and to, on your phones and good morning, good afternoon, good night, depending on which part of the world you're living listening in to. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about Kofi today. I wanted to talk about Kofi because everywhere you look, you see her. A 19-year-old girl from Jamaica, from Spanish town, and she has just taken off. And you'll see a lot of young girls you know, admiring her, wanting to be like her, wondering how they can be like her. And we have to always remember that everyone has their own unique space in this world. Kofi is often saying, if I can do it, you can do it. And it's true to a degree. Whatever you want to do, you can become. It might not necessarily be in music. You could want to be a pilot. You could want to be a scientist. You could want to be a veterinarian. You could want to be a doctor. You could want to be anything. So when you see Kofi, you don't just look at her and think, you know, as young girls, you don't look at her and think, oh, yeah, you know, she's done it. I'm going to start going into my bedroom and start battering out lyrics because it's more than lyrics. You see, Toast is the track that really lifted her. But you have to remember there was also other elements in place. Number one, she had done a poem or some lyrics um, commemorating Usain Bolt called Legend. He heard them and he retweeted them. So that is what you call endorsement. She's been endorsed by somebody who's extremely famous. OK, not only that, that is what put her, gave her some foundation. Then she started working with Potage, and then she started working with Chronix. And, you, you know, it's opportunities. You see, by placing her on that platform, she then started getting opportunities. So it's when, when if you're doing something and you're OK, you're saying, OK, I want to be like Kofi. You have to remember there's a lot of components involved a lot of components so you shouldn't be discouraged and also it is about being unique having your unique style i firmly believe toast took off because it had all of the components it had the god factor the thanks and praise and appreciation and gratitude it also had the rhythm it also had the melody. You see, and those three components, the lyrics, the melody and the rhythm. That is what sets a track apart from any other track. Also, your tone, the uniqueness of delivery. I mean, all, they, they um, kind of compound it and make it even stronger. So with Toast, when you see Toast play, regardless which part of the world, I mean, I love seeing the videos where the Africans are dancing to it. And then you've got one where these two dreads are dancing to it. They've created a dance to it. And it is that, that's the X factor for that track. So it's going to, it's very, very difficult to back that up with something as sensational as that, that transcends um, culture and time and can go anywhere in the world and people will play it and they just can't help moving because that is what that track does. Now, Kofi says she prefers Rapture, that's her best track and maybe it is. But, you know, when you're thinking about other famous tracks that have really, um, had a lot of views, a lot of downloads. They've all got God first. And I wanted to um, cite a couple of them. We've got I Love My Life by DeMarco. That went woof. That went straight through the roof. We have I Am Blessed by Mr. Vegas. That's another example. Not only the words, but you've also got the rhythm, you dance. Even they were playing it last night. I went out last night. And you see them put up them hand and, you know, the blessings and, you know, everybody has to move. Same with I Love My Life by DiMarco. Praise and Worship by Busy Signal. You've got Movado, I'm on the Rock. That's not so much um, one that you can actually dance to in a highway, but you can actually meditate and rock on it and still get a vibe from it. 
You've got Buju Banton, Psalm 23, another powerful track. Sizzler, Ain't Gonna See Us Fall. Luciano, It's Me Against Ja. I Wayne, Living in Life living in love and what i'm saying is is that those kind of tracks that kick off have that sense of gratitude are god filled have the rhythm to back it up and the melody so you know when um young people are looking to emulate kofi they they not only have to find those four key components but they have to have their own unique style I mean, Kofi's doing this school tour with some young people and she's got a couple of girls on there, boy, and they are good upon the lyrics. But they'll need something extra to make that propel. You know, <clears throat> they get somebody to endorse them. I mean, they've always, already got Kofi's endorsement, but, you know, the rhythm and everything else. I mean, they will propel through the roof because that's also key, you know, endorsement, um, opportunity, the timing, all of them are key factors when something's going to kick off and how receptive people are to the track. So you'll hear some people saying reggae is so hard. <clears throat> Sorry, it's hard because it's competitive. And how much, what can you do with it? How many songs can you make? I remember thinking one time, because I used to DJ, I've given it a sabbatical for the moment. Um, but I used to think, how many tracks can they make about weed ganja you know and then i thought how many tracks can you make about love but you can you can make so many but it depends on how you put the lyrics forward what they say what are, what are you saying that's different from somebody else how do people resonate remember adele she spoke from her soul. People resonated with her tracks. And that is what it's about, resonating with your audience. What can you give them? And it is about giving out because you'd be surprised. You give out, you get back. And if you notice, Kofi did that track for um, Usain Bolt, Legend. And she was giving, she was actually um, acknowledging his skill and his art and everything about him in that track and calling him a legend. It wasn't about her. A lot of people, they make tracks and they make music and it's all about, oh, me, you know, me break my heart and oh, this and that. But what are you giving? What are you, what are you doing for other people? What are you telling other people? How are you embracing other people? How are you giving them a part of yourself? How are you telling them your story that will impact them and make a difference? Because that is what this is about. It's not just about, you know, writing songs. And so when you think about Toast, people can identify that. She's talking about, you know, don't don't feel defeated. You must persevere. You always have to be grateful. Thank God for the blessings that come in my right hand. You know, have friends that don't give you stress, that relieve your stress. That's the main message in that in that track. People can identify with that. So all I'm saying with, you know, as young girls, you know, teenagers. You can look at Kofi and say, yeah, she's done it. So can I. But not so can I do it in the same way. Look at how you can embrace what you have. Look at how you can make a difference. Then look for the opportunities. Look for somebody who's in that field that you want to be in and reach out to them. You know, tell them. People love compliments. Tell them how great they are. Because look what she did with Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt retweeted that and boof, that was her platform. Then Protégé, she worked with him and then Chronix took on BBC X1 Extra. And, you know, she's sawn through the roof. She's all over the place. 19, coming from such humble beginnings. And the thing is, you know, People want to know about her background. Everybody wants to know people's secrets. You know when people get famous, everybody wants to know, oh, what is it about them? Why they've got famous? When you think about it, she's no different from any other young lady. 
I mean, a lot of a lot of um, families are one, run by one parent. She had one parent, but the fact is, is that she's a bit like Tony Ann Singh. Her mother was it's sacrificial. Her mother went without to give her. Her mother did everything for her. She was her greatest influence. And then, of course, the church, that's kind of a foundation that kind of can put you on the right track. P people can knock it. They can knock it. But, you know, that's where she got her inspiration from, from the church, from the harmonies, from singing hymns. So you've got the fact that she's raised by a single mother. You've got the fact that she was she went to church. Lots of um, young girls go to church. She went to school regularly. You know, I'd imagine that with a solid foundation, she probably studied more. I mean, she was saying that she gets up five o'clock in the morning and doesn't get home, you know, to go to school, to high school, and didn't get home until seven o'clock in the evening. That shows her dedication. So, yay. Yeah, even though those um, elements are there, the fact that, you know, she's no different from any other young lady, but it's what is in here and what is in here in her heart that makes the difference. It's her morals and her attitude and her faith in herself. That is what makes a difference. So you can look at her and all her background till the cows come home. It, you know, people are unique. There's no special um, trick that, can, that makes one person excel more than another, other than the time and the opportunity. And like I said, everything else that goes with it. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, yeah, she might be doing a collaboration with Rihanna, you know. Um, I was listening to her interview on, um, what's his name, Ebro, in the morning. And he was saying, you know, oh, you might link up with Rihanna. And she said, yeah, you know, Rihanna's contacted her. So they may be doing a collaboration and they mentioned beauty products and stuff. And she said, well, you never know. But you see with somebody like, um, like Kofi, the formative years, the ages between three and eight years old, are the most important years in any child's life. Once you lay down the foundation for that child's upbringing, you know, whether it's morals, whatever you do within those key years makes a difference. If you've raised a child right in those formative years, no kind of evil can overtake them. Nothing bad can happen to them. They can't be influenced. They can't be whizzed off to take drugs. They can't, you know, that kind of thing. They're solid. The only the sad thing is, is that there's a lot of young people aged between three and eight and their home lives are turbulent. You know, they witness sexual abuse. They witness domestic abuse. They're left on their own. Their parents aren't caring or, you know, they don't back them. They don't have any encouragement. There's no love. There's no nurturing. So their experience is going to be different. So, um, I don't even know how I got onto that, to be honest. But yeah, what I was just saying is that backgrounds are important. Um, oh, why did I say that? Well, I'm not quite sure why I said that, but anyway, it's still relevant. Um, I was saying what, oh yeah, I was talking about the differences between Kofi and what makes Kofi different from any other teenager. And like I said, it has got to do with your upbringing. Everybody's upbringing is different. Everybody's experience is different. Everybody's attitude and behaviour is different. If you're a, a disrespectful young woman, young teenager, you're not going to reach the same place that Kofi reached. So it's about the whole character. It's about the whole person. You can't take out bits. You can't take out her, the fact that she's singing and she's on a stage and say, oh, yeah, I can do that. You have to think about her character, her background, how she speaks, how she presents herself. And even in interviews, when they go off the rails and start talking about, you know, whether you was good or whether you was bad, you know, her mind isn't there. She has a pure mind. So they can't corrupt her. 
because that's what I mean, the solid foundation is there. And with young girls, that's what I mean. You cannot just look at Kofi and think, oh, I'm going to be like her. What is your background like? Have you reconciled with your background or are you angry about what's happened to you? Do you have malice for your parents or your siblings? Because all of that will reflect when you're doing your work, when you're trying to sing or whatever it is you have a passion about. Unless you're you're kind of putting it in in a positive way. You can have all of those negative experiences and you can project them positively and they can just take you off. But it is about reconciling with what's gone wrong, accepting what's gone wrong, seeing how you can put it out in a positive way and in a unique way. And if you want to bust a few lyrics and put it on a melody, that's cool. You never know where it might lead. But if you're hurting and you're in pain and you haven't reconciled, you're not going to have that same energy that's going to propel you to stardom and success. That's all I'm saying. You have to have forgiven any past hurts. So I'm not saying that just because you haven't had the same solid upbringing that Kofi has, that's the reason why you can't make it. What I'm saying is, is that these are the kind of things that can affect you if you haven't healed from any pain or any trauma. Um, yeah, she loves her space. She loves time to reflect. You know how many people cannot spend time alone, even adults, let alone children or young teenagers. They have to have their phone. They have to have some kind of distraction. But Kofi loves to spend time on her own. And she also studies artists and studies different genres from grime, R&B, reggae, gospel, everything. She goes through the whole gamut and then she takes, selects what part of each genre that she can identify with and she makes something unique that is her own and that's why they were saying what is that music that you make what do we call it they can't categorize it you can't categorize something that's unique they had to say oh it's a kofi it's a kofi it's a kofi rhythm or something that's what they were saying because you can't put it in dance hall and reggae is too vast so that is what you are looking for. You're looking at something unique that they can't pigeonhole, that they can't categorise. When you hear toast, what, what is that they're saying? How can we categorise that? They want to take it. They want to put it in a little box. You can't do that with music like that. That's boof. That's gone through the roof. For the reasons I've said in the, earlier on. Um... Yeah, so it's important to spend time on your own. It is important to gather your thoughts. Um, that is when most people are most inspired. That is when you can kind of get that little voice that says, oh, you should be doing this. When, you're, when your mind is full of confusion and people and phones and TV and clothes and shops and all that kind of thing, you can't think clearly about what your destination is or what you should be doing, what your path is, because there's no peace. So it is important, if you want to take a, um, a page out of Kofi's book, spend time on your own and enjoy it. Don't see it as a punishment. Don't do it just because I said so. Who am I? But do it because you want to. Do it because you want to find yourself. Do it because you want to know who you are and what you're meant to be doing. Because when your mind is cluttered and you're all around, that's why sometimes you see these dreads, they smoke the spliff and they just go into some kind of daze and they talk about them upon some kind of meditation. But, you know, that meditation helps them think. It helps them, you know, when they talk about wisdom, it's that silence. It's that those voices that come into your voice, that inspiration. That's what happens when you spend time alone. And it's really important to spend time alone. So, yes. Yeah. So, and also, um, when you think about other teenagers, they might not have had positive adult influences, like I've said. They may not respect adults or their wisdom. And like I said, Kofi, when you're thinking about her, she respects, you can tell she's a respectful person. And she takes what her mother says on board. And these are the things when you're saying why other teenagers are different from Kofi. You know, there's a lot of elements, a lot of little bits and pieces that make her different from any other teenager. 
and you can achieve, but you look at every aspect of her, not just one aspect. I think, like I said, looking outside yourself, she was saying that, you know, every with um, her, when somebody asked her about her goals, she said her goals aren't materialistic, they're not tangible. She said you can have 10 cars and a big house, and all that's going to do is influence you and the people who are around you, but you're not going to influence the world, which is what she wants to do. You see, she's thinking outside herself. She's thinking about influencing the world, influencing other people through her lyrics. And once she gets that right rhythm and that right melody, she has gone through the roof. Um, I think I am... Um, <clears throat> yeah, for me, I love Toast. And I like the Ragamuffin track. Um, Burning and Rapture. I just like something that makes me move, I should say. Um... But yeah, it's, um, like I said, reggae is competitive. The lyrics need, and it needs a unique tone and style. Rhythm and melody is the key. Yeah. And somebody made a rumour about she didn't get a visa. Don't even listen to it. It's not true. Yeah, so I think I'm going to leave it there. And, um... Yeah, I think that's it. Bye-bye.